Taro. It's me. Oh no! Okay, I'm done. Hello guys, I know that uh... <clears throat> it's early, but I didn't want to wait, so <laughs> let's get this Doki Doki Literature Club part 2 stream over with. Mm-hmm. Okay. Wait. Wait. Another day passes and it's time for the club meeting today. Yeah, I remember. I've gotten a little more comfortable here over the past couple days. Entering the club room, the usual scene greets me. Hi, Benny. Yo, yo Sayori. Looks like you're in a good mood today, and oh, I oh, I forgot to mention, uh, Lego won't be joining me tonight. He has he has school, so I'm gonna be doing this by myself. Hmm. 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 <coughs> <laughs> I'm just not used to being in the club. That's all. I'm just not used used to you being in the club. In the club, that's all I see. That's that's a pretty simple thing to get you in a good mood. But I guess it's always the simple things with you anyway. Speaking of which, I'm kind of hungry. Will you come with me to buy a snack? Nope. No thanks. Eh? That's not like you at all. I have my reasons. Why don't we take a look look at your purse, Sayori? Eh -eh. Why that all of a sudden? Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm focused on my phone. Just go ahead and read real quick while I text my uh, sister and whatever. sure what's going on, but I'm pretty sure... Yeah, she doesn't have money, does she? give up. Don't make me feel guilty. If you feel guilty, that means you deserve to feel guilty. Uh-huh. <laughs> Yuri suddenly giggles. Eh? I didn't notice that she was listening in. Her face is in her book, as always. Uh-uh. I wasn't listening or anything. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> it was just something in my book. Yuri. Tell Benny to let me borrow some money. That's... Don't get me involved like that, Sayori. Besides, you should only buy what you can reasonably afford. 
And frankly, after pulling a mischievous little stunt like that, your suffering is fair enough of retribution. Uh. Did I just... I, I didn't mean that. I got too absorbed into my book. <laughs> I really like when you speak your mind, Yuri. It doesn't happen much, but it's a fun side of you. That's... There's no way you could think that. You were right, though. I did something bad, and now I have to accept the revolution. Retribution. That! Still coming from you, Sayori. I guess that's a little devil inside of us, isn't there? I guess there's a little devil inside of all of us, isn't there? <laughs> Don't let her fool you. Sayori knows exactly what she's doing. After all, she told you guys that she was bringing me to the club before she even told me. But... You wouldn't have come if it weren't for the cupcakes. So I had to trick Natsuki into making them. Oh, Come on, give me more credit than that's that, Sayori. <laughs> Whap! Yeah. Out of nowhere, something smacks its Sayori face and tumbles onto the desk. I know Natsuki did that. Ow. What was... Eh? A cookie! Sure enough, it's a giant cookie wrapped in plastic. I know what those things are. Sayori glances around. Is this a miracle? It's because I paid my re restitution. <laughs> She's such an errand. Retribution. <clears throat> Actually, that one almost worked. <laughs> I was just gonna give it to you. But then I heard you blab about the cupcakes. It was totally worth seeing your reaction, though. <laughs> I knew it was Natsuki that did that. N Natsuki! That's so nice of you, but apologize. I'm so happy. Sayori hugs the cookie. Jeez, just eat it. Sayori rapidly tears the wrapper and takes a big bite. Show good. <laughs> Yeah. I bit my tongue. <laughs> You're going through a lot over just one cookie. Natsuki takes a bite of her own cookie. Oh, uh, yours looks really good too, Natsuki. Can I try it? Oh, jeez. Beggars can't be choosers. But yours is chocolate. Yeah? Why do you think I gave you that one? Fine. Still, I'm really happy that you shared this one with me. <laughs> Sayori gets out of her seat and goes behind in the Natsuki and wraps her arms around her. Ah, oh, jeez. I get it, I get it. Cookie still in hand, Natsuki reaches to nudge Sayori off of her. Um. Suddenly... Oh, leans down, takes a bite of Natsuki's cookie. Hey! Did you seriously just do that? <laughs> 
Mouth full, Sayuri trots away to safety. Yuri and I laugh as well. Jeez, you're such a kid sometimes. Monica, can you tell Sayori... Eh? Natsuki glances around. Monica isn't in the club. Ugh. Where's Monica anyway? Good question. Have any of you heard anything about her being late today? Not me. Yeah, I haven't either. Hmm. That's a bit unusual. I hope she's okay. Of course she's okay. She's probably just had something to do today. She's pretty popular, after all. Eh? <coughs> you don't think she... She has a... <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. She's probably more desirable than all of us combined. <laughs> That's true. Excuse me? Suddenly the door swings open. Sorry, I'm super sorry. Ah, oh, there you are. I didn't mean to be late. I hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Mo Monica chose the club over her boyfriend after all. They're so strong willed. <laughs> Hang on. I'm trying to get my Twitch up, so go ahead and read that if you guys want. <clears throat> okay. To be honest, I kind of lost track of time. <laughs> that makes no sense, though. You would have heard the bell ring, at least. I must not have heard it since I was practicing piano. <clears throat> piano? I wasn't aware you played music as well, Monica. Uh, I don't really. I kind of just started recently. I've always wanted to learn piano. Suspicious. That's so cool. You should play something for us, Monica. That's. Monica looks at me. Maybe once I get a little bit better, I will. Yay! That sounds cool. I'd also look forward to it. Is that so? In that case, I won't let you down, Benny. Hi, welcome to stream. Monica smiles sweetly. Uh, I didn't mean any pressure or anything like that. <laughs> Don't worry. I've been practicing a whole lot recently. And I'd really love the chance to share one once I'm ready. They see. In that case, best of luck. Thanks. So I didn't miss anything, did I? No, not really. <clears throat> I chose to leave out Sayori's mischievous escapade. I'm sure Natsuki will end up complaining to her anyway. It looks like everyone has already settled down. Somehow already finished her. Some Sayori's. Uh, 
Whatever. Yuri's back to her book and Natsuki disappeared into the closet. Hey, Yuri. Oops. My bad. Eh? Uh... I suddenly noticed that Yuri is reading a different book from the one we've been reading together. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Uh, no. I was kind of just waiting for you. If that's the case. Oh, if that's the case. Why don't we go ahead and get started? Yes, let's. Actually, I have a request. Do you mind if I make some tea first? Not at all. Thanks very much. If there's one thing that can make my reading here any better, it's a nice cup of tea. Not to mention, for yourself as well. Hmm. Yuri stands up and makes her way to the closet. I follow and watch as she retrieves a small water pitcher from the shelf and with the kind with the filter with inside. The kind with the filter inside. Can you hold this for a second? Sure. Yuri, Yuri hands me the water pitcher and also fetches an electric kettle. I'm going to plug this in at the teacher's desk and then we'll go get some water. She walks past me and sets the kettle down on the teacher's desk. I simply watch her movements. To my surprise, the way she moves really contrasts her speaking mannerisms. Especially because of her long legs, Yuri appears elegant and methodical. Okay, may I have the water pitcher? Thanks. I'll be right back. Well, I might as well walk with you. Yeah, why not? Shall we go then? Yeah. <clears throat> hmm? Where are you two off to? Huh? We're just... Yuri was going to make some tea, so... I suddenly realize how weird it sounds to explain this to Monica. We're just filling the water pitcher. Ah, okay. Sorry, I was just a bit curious. And that's kind of a one-person job, isn't it? That's... Monica, please mind your own business for once. Or do you want want to tell me there's something wrong with helping with helping involve Benny in club activities? Eh? My mouth gapes. I I suppose there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> then let's go, Benny. Uh Yuri quickly exits the room, and then I follow. And I follow. Once in the hallway, she suddenly puts her forehead against the wall. I spoke without thinking. How could I say something like that? Yuri. I just... Something about the way she said that... It made me feel so irritated. What's wrong with me? No, Yuri. I think you did the right thing. I wasn't expecting it, but... It's also not right for Monica to judge people like that. <clears throat> Benny... How come even when I do something bad, 
you're being nice to me. Because nothing that you do is bad as as long as you make it seem as long as <sighs> I can't read. Nobody's perfect. We have emotions and we can't always hide them anyway. But you always amplify things in your head. Your mind turns a light rain shower into a hurricane. Mm. No. Wouldn't you hate me for something as terrible as that? Why would I hate you? I can't hate someone for having emotions. Good. What kind of friend would do that? Friend, do you say? Uh, um... Yuri lifts her head. Benny? I really like being friends with you. Ahaha. Uh, <laughs> Thanks, Yuri. I like being friends with you, too. I feel kind of awkward saying something like that. But I'm doing my best to help Yuri feel better. Anyway... Uh, yeah. Shall we go? Yeah. Yuri and I walk into the nearest water fountain. To the nearest water fountain. Blech. Once we fill up the water pitcher, we return to the classroom. Benny, do you like oolong tea? Oh, uh, yeah. Anything is fine. Very well. Yuri sets the temperature on the kettle to 200 degrees. Now it's time to get to the teapot. Get the teapot. Jeez. You really do this properly, don't you? Of course. I shouldn't do any less when I'm making tea for others. Even if I'm not an expert on tea or anything. <laughs> In that case, you'll be even more impressed. Hmm. Perhaps I will. Yuri fetches the teapot and begins measuring the tea leaves. <coughs> To my surprise, she even starts humming a little to herself. You must be in a good mood now. Is... is that so? I was letting it show. And you noticed. I was doing a bit of thinking. <clears throat> and I decided that I would try expressing myself a little bit more. It turns out, it's not very hard for me to do. When it's you who's around anyway... Uh... That's great, Yuri. Just don't push yourself too much. You're always worrying about me, Benny. It's very endearing. That's... Yuri wasn't kidding. I don't even know if I can keep up with this. I watch Yuri pour a cup of tea for each of us. Benny, I have another request. Do you mind if we sit on the floor today? Eh, why is that? It's a little bit easier on my back. I can read with my back against the wall against the wall rather than bending over at my desk. Eh, that's reasonable. Oh, sorry, I didn't realize. No worries. I just have a back pain fairly regularly, so I do my best to manage it. Is that so? I wonder why that is. It's most likely because my, uh, 
my your posture, right? Always hunched over like that while reading. Yes. <clears throat> that terrible reading posture. So that's why we should sit on the floor. Fair enough. I'll go ahead and get get the book. I retrieved the book from my bag. Ah, I have some chocolate as well. It's a big bag of small chocolate candies I kept hidden from Sayori's candy radar. I take it, since it'll go with, well with the tea. Yuri and I then sit against the wall, teacups at our sides. As if in sync, we assume the same reading position as last time, each holding one half of the book. Except this time, our bodies are even closer to each other. I can't see too well. Yuri slides closer until his shoulders are touching. How am I supposed to focus on reading like this? Yuri was always kind of cute, but... When she's being less apprehensive, it's almost more than I can handle. Your teacup. Yuri hands me my teacup. Holding it with my hand that's not holding the book, I end up in a position that makes it even harder to focus. <clears throat> because now I need to worry about making sure I don't accidentally touch your chest. Meanwhile, Yuri hasn't noticed a single thing. She wears an intense reading expression, and I can only presume the world around her has faded away. I use all of my willpower to focus on reading. After a few minutes, I finally managed to relax a little. I put the teacup between my legs and fumble with the chocolate wrapper. Oh, sorry. I briefly let go of the book and finish opening the wrapper. You can have as much as you want. Oh, that's... That's okay. I won't take any. Eh? Are you sure? Well... If I touch it, then it might get smudges on the pages. Ah, oh, you're right. I didn't even think about that. My bad. No need to apologize. I'll hold the book, okay? Are you sure? Of course. Yuri opens the book with both hands. She holds it so that I don't have any harder of a time <laughs> reading from it. But up. <laughs> As a result, I'm practically resting on top of my leg. <coughs> well, in that case, Yuri is already focused on reading. Again. I take a chocolate candy and pop it into my mouth. <coughs> <coughs> then I take another chocolate. <coughs> Sorry. And I hold it up to Yuri. She doesn't even look away from the book. She simply parts her lips as if the situation was completely natural. Wow. But that means I can't stop here. I apprehensively put the chocolate in her mouth. Just like that, Yuri closes her lips over it. Eh? Yuri's, ex Yuri's expression suddenly breaks. Did... I ju did I just... 
Yuri looks at me like she needs to confirm what just happened. Um... Benny... Sorry. I guess I shouldn't have done that. Well, do. Uh, that's... Well... You were just helping. That's something that friends do. I know they like each other more than friends. Right? I mean... Not really in this kind of context, but... Yeah. <coughs> That's all it was. Yeah. Then... You don't need to stop or anything. We see. The situation has gotten really tense. Yuri tries to return to the book. But I can tell just by your expression that even she can't focus now. My heart is pounding. I nervously take another chocolate between my fingers. But this time, Yuri's eyes meet mine. How did it even come to this? Because you started it? <laughs> Yuri doesn't avert her gaze. I notice her chest rising and falling apart to the rhythm of her breaths. I raise my arm. Uh, like before, Yuri parts her lips. But it's different this time. I take the chocolate and place it in her mouth. I feel her hot breath on my fingers. Okay, everyone. Whoa. Uh. Yuri jolts back. It's time to share poems. Benny, you can help Yuri put put that put away the tea stuff, right? Yeah, of course. Okay, thanks. Okay, the spell is abruptly broken. I'll I'll take care of the cups. Yeah. Yuri picks up the teacups from the floor. I pick up the bag of chocolates. In the end, we hastily clean up without so much as a word between us. I get the feeling this is something that something neither of us will have the courage to bring up. I wouldn't either. Let's see what you've written for today. Yuri stares at the poem with a surprised expression on her face. Do you like it? I'm gonna save. Return. Alright. <clears throat> Benny. This one might even be better than yesterday's. How did you even pick up on this so quickly? Just yesterday, I was telling you the kind of techniques worth practicing. Maybe that's why. You did a good job at it. Explaining. I really wanted to try giving it more imagery. Yuri visibly swallows. Even her hands appear sweaty. I'm not used to this. Used to what? I don't know. It's fine, take your time. Yuri breathes and collects her thoughts. I know that Yuri likes to think before she speaks, so I offer that patience to her. Yeah. 
just being appreciated like this, I guess. It, prob it probably sounds really stupid. But seeing someone motivated by my writing, it just makes me really happy. Are you saying you've never shared your writing before? Yuri nods. Really? I don't believe it. I really write for my- I really only write for myself, and besides, people would just laugh at me. Do you really think that? Again, Yuri nods. Huh. <coughs> think you're close friends? <coughs> Yuri doesn't respond to that. I wonder why. Anyway. Do you want to share the poem you wrote today? Yeah. I do. It fits with you. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, I'm not sure how... Those of you that can read, uh... Cursive, go ahead. Well, first I'm gonna go up and let you go, give you guys a minute to read this. Let's move on to the second one. Okay. Um, I was a little more daring with the one, with this one than yesterday's. I can see that. It's a lot more metaphorical. I don't know if it's my fault, but I can't begin to imagine what this poem is about. That's right. It's a bit closer to my preferred writing style. <gasps> <clears throat> Using the poem as a canvas to express vivid imagery and conveying emotions through them. Yeah, if I take it at a face value, then I can't figure out what it's supposed to mean. I think it's something that different people can relate to in their own way. I wanted to express the way it feels for me to indulge in my more unusual hobbies. It's sort it's those sorts of things I'm usually forced to keep to myself. So I sometimes enjoy writing about them. Why do you keep them to yourself? But because they're embarrassing. <clears throat> and people would make fun of me. Don't you have anything like that, Benny? Well... Yeah, I guess I do. I feel like everyone has a little something like that. The best... The best we can do is respect each other and our individualities. Even, it's, even if it's difficult sometimes and some things make us uncomfortable. After all, I hadn't learned to embrace my own weirdness 
If I hadn't learned to perform this, I probably wouldn't hate myself. I, I might be ranting a little bit now. <clears throat> but I'm glad that you're a good listener. You're good at a lot of things. Writing, listening... There really aren't many people like you, Benny. That's exaggerating a little bit. It's just... how I feel. I never thought I would feel so comfortable sharing my writing. But now, I, f I almost feel like I look forward to it. It's just a really nice feeling. And you're to thank for that. No problem, girl. It's... nothing, really. Yuri smiles sincerely at me. For just a moment, her timidness seems to disappear. Alright, now let's do, uh... Sayori, since she's my close friend. <clears throat> oh! I like this one, Benny. It has some nice feelings in it. Oh, I'm glad. Does that mean it's better than yesterday's? Mm, let me think. I don't know. I guess I like them both. <laughs> but that's not very helpful, you know. Well, I'm not very good at figuring out if poems are good or bad. That's why I just go by my heart. If it makes me feel things, then it must be a good poem. I'm not sure that's exactly how it works. Then again, I guess conveying feelings is a pretty important part of this whole thing. Yeah, maybe. Honestly, I don't even know what kind of writing you like in the first place. Yeah. Me neither. Ugh. I can see why. Why don't you at least give it some thought? Try giving it some thought. Aw, you want to write something for me? That's so sweet. Really? That's not what he said. Yeah, right. But you're always thinking about other people. You need to think about yourself once in a while. If you don't, you might up you might end up getting hurt at some point. Hmm? Eh? Well, I don't really know what you mean, but I'll try to keep it in mind. Well, whatever. Anyway, let's see. Hmm. I guess I like happy poems. Wait, sometimes I like sad poems too. Sometimes a little bit of both. There's a word for that, right? What's the word I'm looking for? Bittersweet. Yeah. I like things that are happy and things that are sad. Happy and sad? I can't see you liking something sad, Sayori. Well, I like, I like happy the most. And sometimes when you have a little rain cloud in your head, A sad poem can help with the rain cloud, give the rain cloud a little hug, and make a nice happy rainbow. Okay, that's an interesting analogy. Sayori, that's unexpectedly poetic. It, it is? Maybe I'm getting better at expressing my feelings after all. Thanks, Benny. 
I should go write that down then. You can read my poem now, okay? Finally. Alright. Bottles, okay. I pop off my scalp like the lid of a cookie jar. It's the secret place where I keep all my dreams. <clears throat> Little balls of sunshine all rubbing together like a bundle of kittens. I reach inside my thumb and forefinger and pluck one out. It's warm and tingly, but there's no time to waste. I put it in a bottle to keep it safe. And I put the bottle on the shelf with all of the other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts, and bottles all in a row. Okay, okay. This is a long one, wow. My collection makes me lots of friends. Each bottle a, st a starlight to make amends. Sometimes my friend feels a certain way. Down comes a bottle to save the day. Night after night, more dreams. Friend after friend, more bottles. Deeper and deeper my fingers go, like exploring a dark cave, discovering the secrets hidden in the nooks and crannies. Digging, digging and digging, scrapping and scrapping. I blow dust off my bottle caps. It doesn't feel like time elapsed. My empty self could use some more. My friends look through my locked front door. Finally, all done, I open up and come and in come my friends, and they come in such a hurry. Do they want my bottles that much? I, fra I frantically pull them from the shelf, one after the other, holding them out, and every friend Holding them, holding them out to each and every friend is what it says. Each and every bottle. But every time I let one go, it shatters against against the tile between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts, and shards all over the floor. They were supposed to be for my friends. My friends who aren't smiling, they're all shouting, pleading something. But all I hear is echo, 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 inside my head. Sayuria! Girl, I'm impressed. Dude, this is a good poem. I like it. Holy crap. Sayori, did you re- Sayori, not Yuri. Sayori. Sayori, do you re did you really write this? Of course I did. I didn't tell you yesterday I was gonna write the best... Didn't I tell you yesterday I was gonna write the best poem ever? Mm. I already forgot. <clears throat> yeah, but... I mean, I didn't expect something like this coming from you. Monica taught me a whole lot. <clears throat> I've been really in touch with my feelings recently. I see that. It's almost kind of creepy. Creepy? Well, not exactly. Maybe because I'm not used to you being cheer- To you being cheerful? Well, never mind. I'm thinking too hard about it. The point is, it came out good, you should be proud of it. Uh, thanks. I feel like- I feel like I was meant to express myself this way. It even helps me understand my own feelings a little bit better. Writing is like magic. Yeah, that's kinda true. You've gotten pretty passionate about this, huh? I hope you keep it up. Yeah. Writing's the best. I'm gonna keep writing until I die. <laughs> Don't get ahead of yourself. Sierra so always had a habit of getting obsessed with something before dropping it no more than a week later. I wonder if this one is... I wonder if this is one of those times. But seeing the passion in her eyes makes it hard for me to be pessimistic. Pessimistic. Okay, Natsuki. Hmm. hmm. I liked your last one better. Eh, really? Well, yeah, I, I can tell you were a little more daring than this one. With this one. But you're really not good enough for that, I 
for that. It, f it fell flat. That may be true, but I just wanted to try something different. I'm still figuring this all out. I mean, I always like poems that aren't trying too hard. I hate when people try to sound fancy and add more meaning just by using annoying and complicated language. I don't like it either. Just to make it simple, cute, and to the point. Just make it simple, cute, and to the point. Y Yuri's head over heels for this cryptic nonsense, but I see right through that BS, ha. Huh? Making your reader look so hard after this deep meaning is just an excuse to have no meaning at all. I guess that's one way to look at it. Well, everyone has their own opinion, but my opinion is the best opinion, and I'm sure you figured that out already. Er, anyway, here's my poem. Maybe you'll learn something. Alright. Amy likes spiders, okay? You know what I heard about Amy? Amy likes spiders. Icky, rig wriggly, hairy, ugly spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a cute singing voice. I heard her singing my favorite love song. Every time she sang the chorus, my heart would pound to the ry rhythm of the words. But she likes spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. One time, I hurt, hurt my leg really bad. Amy helped me up and took me to the nurse. I tried not to let her touch me. She likes spiders, so her hands are probably gross. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a lot of friends. I always see her talking to people. She probably... She probably talks about spiders. What if her friends start to like spiders too? That's why I'm not friends with her. Seriously. It doesn't matter if she has other hobbies. It doesn't matter if she keeps it private. It doesn't matter if she doesn't hurt anyone. It's gross. She's gross. The world is better off without spider lovers. And I'm gonna tell everyone. Okay, this one's kind of mean and judgmental, Natsuki. Can't like this one. That's mean and judgmental. <laughs> I mean, hey. I don't like spiders either, but still. Not bad, right? It's quite a bit longer than yesterday's. Yesterday's was way too short. I was just warming up. I hope you didn't think that was the best I could do. No, of course not. Anyway, the message is pretty straightforward in this poem. I doubt I have to explain it. Sometimes you can explain complicated issues with much simpler analogies. And it helps people realize how stupid they're being. Like anyone would agree that the subject of this poem is an ignorant jerk. Do you know people like that? Do you know people like that? Of course not. It's about how everyone thinks my... <coughs> Ugh. I'm sick of blowing the nose. That doesn't matter. It can be about anything. I wrote it to be easy to relate to. Everyone has some kind of weird hobby or guilty pleasure. Ah, crap, I'm bleeding now. Something that you're afraid of... Something that you're afraid of people find out, they make fun of you or think less of you. But that just makes people... People stupid. Who cares what someone likes as long as they're not hurting anyone and it makes them happy? Well, why does your poem say the opposite? I think people really need to learn to respect others for liking weird things. Huh, that's funny. Yuri wrote about something similar today. Huh? Did you say Yuri? Yeah. She said her poem was about an unusual hobby of hers. I didn't really get it, but she said something similar to you. That people should make fun of... Um... Shouldn't... Make each other feel insecure about those things. Really? Well, I mean, Yuri's pretty weird, so I wouldn't doubt that she has some weird hobbies. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Uh, it's not like I would judge her or anything. Natsuki has trouble finding words. 
I guess I should try not to be so mean to her. Now you think that? If she feels insecure about her weird behaviors and stuff, I mean, I always hate people who make me feel insecure. And Yuri made me feel insecure yesterday. By the way, but the way you put it, it sounds like she's learned her lesson. Well, I would say so. Even if her writing style is really different, I'm sure she'll appreciate the message in your poem. It's what I do best, after all. I don't like writing unless there's a good message to take away from it. <laughs> okay, okay, I respect that. Like, conveying emotions is important. But I want to make people think, not just feel. Remember that. I'm going to write a good one for tomorrow, so look forward to it. Alright, now, last but not least, Monica. Hi again, Benny. How's the writing going? Alright, I guess. I'll take that. As long as it's not going to be bad. Oh, wow, that's very reassuring, Monica. I'm happy that you're applying yourself. Maybe soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. Ahaha, <laughs> I wouldn't count on that. You never know. Want to share what you wrote for today? Sure, here you go. I give my poem to Monica. Alright, this one's good. It feels like you're not only getting more comfortable with your style, but the imagery is better than the last one I read. Yeah, I, I don't even know what kind of... I don't even remember what kind I wrote. I mean, I just chose words. Just wondering... Just wondering. But have you been finding inspiration in Yuri's writing style? Hmm. I guess so. You can't deny that she's talented. Yeah, sh yeah, totally. I think her poems are the most... romantic. That's the best way to describe it. She's like a totally different person when she picks up a pen. I noticed that, too. Or when she's talking about literature, it's like a light that turns on inside of her. Or inside her. Jeez, that sounded so wrong. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Sadly, it's hard to get much personal conversation out of her. It's hard to get much personal. But yeah, I said it right. Trust me, I've tried. Who knows what goes on in that head of hers? I hope you don't mean that in a bad way. No, of course not. I did meant that... I wish she didn't keep so, so much to herself. But still, defending her like that... You must be pretty into her. Eh? You, complete, you completely misunderstood. <laughs> Calm down, I'm kidding. Besides, I'm pretty sure she's already got a boyfriend. Wait, really? Yeah, a fictional one, anyway. Monica kind of whispers that last part to me. It's just a hunch, but, well, there's not really anything wrong with that. Oh well, I know. I, w I was just saying. But anyway, you want to read my poem now? I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do too. Alright, let's take a look. Save me. The colors, they won't stop. Bright, beautiful colors, flashing, expanding, piercing, red, green, blue, an endless cause something funny of meaningless noise. The noise, the noise, it won't stop. Violent, violent, grating waveforms, squeaking, screeching, piercing. Sane quiz tangent. Like playing a chalkboard and a... Ah, oh, dang it, I wasn't... I wasn't done. Fuck. <sighs> I need a break from reading. Mm -hmm. Damn it, I wasn't done reading that one.
someone asking what a a poem can be abstract as a physical expression of a feeling. Okay. Or a conversation with the reader. So putting it that way, not every poem is about something. Anyway. But here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. Yeah, that's what I do. You never know when you might change your mind. Or when something unexpected may happen. Wait, is this tip even about writing? What am I even talking about? <laughs> That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Okay, everyone. We're all done reading each other's poems, right? I have something extra planned today. So if everyone could come sit at the front of the room. Is this about the festival? Well, sort of. Ugh, do we really have to do something for the festival? It's not like we can put together anything good in just a few days. We'll just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting any new members. That's a concern of mine as well. I don't really know... I don't really do well with last-minute preparations. Don't worry so much. We're going to keep it simple, okay? We won't need much more than a few decorations. Sayori has been working on posters, and I've been... And I've designed some pamphlets that we, we can give out during the event. Okay, that's... <coughs> excuse me. Great and all. But that doesn't tell us what we're going to be doing for the event. Oh, sorry. I thought you heard about it yesterday. We're going to be performing. Performing? P um, Monica. Yeah, we're going to be having a poetry performance. Each of us are going to choose a poem to recite during the event. But the cool part is we're going to let everyone else come up and recite poems too. So Yuri's putting it on her posters in case any anyone wants to prepare ahead of time. <laughs> Sayori, who's been coloring a poster, holds it up for us to see. Are you kidding me, Monica? You didn't... You didn't already start putting those posters up? Posters up, did you? Uh, well, I did. Do you really think it's that bad of an idea? Well, no. It's not a bad idea, but I didn't sign up for this, you know? There is no way I'm going to be performing in front of a group of people like that. I agree with Natsuki. I could never in my life do something like that. Imagining it, Yuri shakes her head in fear. Guys, no, Sayori. I understand where they're coming from. Remember that Natsuki and Yuri never shared their poems with anyone until just a couple days ago? It's a lot for them to recite their poems out loud to a whole room of people. I guess I kind of overlooked that. So I'm sorry. But, I still think we should give it our best. We're, on we're the only ones responsible for the fate of this club. If we start the event... In if we start the event and each put on a good performance, then it will inspire others to do the same. And the more people who perform, the better. The more people who perform, the better we'll be able to show everyone what literature is all about. Yeah, it's about expressing your feelings, being intimate with yourself, finding new horizons, and having fun. That's right. And it's those reasons that we're all in this club today. Do you want to share that with others? To inspire them to find the same feelings that brought you here in the first place? I know you do. I know we all do. And if... And if it... 
If all it takes is standing in front of the room for two minutes and reciting a poem, then I know you can do it. Natsuki and Yuri remain silent. Sayori looks worried. I guess that leaves me no choice. I agree. I don't think it's too much to ask. I think that Sayori and Monica have been trying really hard to get new members. The least we can do is help them out a little bit. Well, maybe, but... Looks like Natsuki doesn't have any arguments left. Ugh. Okay, fine. I guess I'll just have to get it over with. Alright. Phew. Thanks, Natsuki. What about you, Yuri? Yuri dejectedly glances at everyone else's expectant faces. I guess I don't really have a choice. <laughs> That's everyone. You're the best, Yuri. This club is seriously going to be the death of me. Oh gosh, you'll be fine, Yuri. But anyway, let's move on to the main event. I want each of you to choose a poem of yours. We're going to practice reciting them in front of each other. N -n no way! Monica, this is too sudden. Well, if you can't recite your poem in front of the club, how can you expect to do it in front of a expect to do it in front of strangers oh no don't worry I'll start off I'll start off to help everyone feel a little more comfortable can I go next <laughs> of course now let's see Monica flips through her notebook to the specific poem she has in mind for herself she then stands behind the podium the title of the po poem is the way they fly ahem <clears throat> Monica begins reciting her poem. Her clear, confident voice fills the room. Fills the room. More than that, her in her inflection is pristine. She knows exactly how to apply emotion behind each line she recites, bringing the words to life. Is this something she's done before, or is she simply a natural? I glance around me. Everyone has their eyes on Monica. Sayori looks amazed. Yuri has an intense expression on her face that I don't understand. Finally, Monica finishes the recitation. The four of us applaud. Monica takes a breath and smiles. That... that was so good, Monica. Uh, thank you very much. I was just hoping to set a good example. Are you ready to go next, Sayori? I'll go next. What? Yuri's fired up all of a sudden. Yuri cl clutches a sheet of paper between her hands and stands up. Keeping her head down, she walks cl quickly over to the podium. Well, that's one way to get her confidence up. This poem is called... Yuri anxiously glances at each of us. You can do it, Sior... I mean, y you can do it, Yuri. It's called, uh, After Image of a Crimson Eye. Yuri's voice shakes as she starts reading the poem. Just a moment ago, she practically refused to do this. Why is she suddenly putting in so much effort? As Yuri gets past a couple of lines, her voice changes. It's almost like what happens when Yuri gets absorbed into her books. Her quivering words transform into the sharp syllable syllables of a fierce and confident woman. The poem is full of twists and turns in its structure that she... I, inu, inu, shit, inu, shit. I don't know how to pronounce that word with perfect timing. This must be a rare glimpse into the whirling fire Yuri keeps concealed inside her head. Suddenly she's finished. Everyone is stunned. Yuri snaps back to reality and glances around her as if she bewildered even herself. I, it's up to me to save the situation. I'm the first to start applying. Everyone joins me afterwards, and we give Yuri the recognition she deserves. It's not that we didn't want to applaud for her, applaud for her, but we were caught off, we were caught so off guard that we must have forgotten. As we applaud, Yuri holds the poem to her chest and rushes back into her seat. Yuri, that was really good. Thank you for sharing. Looks like Yuri was down for the count. Okay, I guess I'm next then. Sayori hops out of her chair and cheerfully walks to the podium. 
This one's called My Meadow. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I giggled. <laughs> Sayori. It's a lot harder than I thought. How did you guys do it so easily? Uh, try not to think of it like you're reciting to other people. Imagine you're reciting it to yourself in front of a mirror or in your own head. It's your poem, so it'll come out the best that way. I see, I see. Okay, then. Sayori begins her poem. Somehow it feels like her soft voice w was made as a perfect match. The poem isn't aimlessly cheery like Sayori is. This, it's serene and bittersweet. If I were to read this on paper, I probably wouldn't think much of it. But hearing it come from Sayori's voice almost gives it a whole new meaning. Maybe this is what Sayori meant when she said she likes my poems. Ooh. It's like I get to reach more deeply into someone that I thought I knew through and through. Sayori and we applaud. I did it! Good job, Sayori. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> even Benny liked it. I guess that's a good sign. What does that even mean? It came out nicely, Sayori. The atmosphere of the poem fits you really nicely. But it might be that other poems wouldn't work quite as well with that kind of delivery. Eh? I don't really understand. In other words, I've seen poems of yours where that sort of gentle delivery wouldn't work as well. They might need a little more force behind them, depending on what you're reading. Oh, I think I know what you mean. Oh, I know what you mean, excuse me. That's what- that's- well, I've been practicing that kind of thing. It's just embarrassing to do in front of everyone. <laughs> the next time I'm going to make you pick a poem that challenges you a little more. We don't have much time before the festival, you know. Okay. Now, who's next? Natsuki? <laughs> don't make me go before Benny. It's not like I can compare to you guys anyway. Might as well let Benny lower everyone one standards a little before I have to do it. Excuse me! Rude! It's fine, it's fine. I might as well get it over with. Jeez, she's such a, she's such a soon today. But it's not like I have much of a selection of what to read. I'll just go with what I wrote for today. I stand up and step in front of the po podium. Everyone has their eyes on me, making me feel incredibly, terribly awkward. I recite my poem. Since I'm not exactly confident in my own writing, it's hard to put energy into it. Despite that, once I finish, I receive applause anyway. Sorry, I'm, I'm really not as good as everyone else. Don't worry about it so much. I think it's less about your abilities and more about your lack of confidence in your writing. That's something that'll improve over time, though. Yeah, maybe. Alright, then. That just leaves you, Natsuki. Yeah, yeah. I'm going. Natsuki begrudgingly gets out of her seat and makes her way to the podium. The poem is called... It's called... Why are you all looking at me? Because you're presenting. <laughs> anyway, the poem is called Jump. Natsuki takes a breath. When she starts reciting the poem, her sour attitude disappears a little. While she's still a little un... In, unenthused. Her poem has a rhythm and a rhyme to it. It's Natsuki's trademark style, and it works surprisingly well when spoken aloud. The words feel like they bounce up and down as if giving life to the poem. Natsuki finishes and everyone applauds. She huffs back to her seat. That wasn't so bad, was it? Easy for you to say. You better not make me do that again. Oh, uh, well... Do you at least feel prepared enough to recite a poem in front of other people? I mean, doing it in front of other people will be way easier. I can put on whatever face I want for other people. But when it's just my friends, it's just embarrassing. That's a surprise, Natsuki. I think... I think it would be the other way around for me. Yeah, no kidding. Well, that's just how it is, so... Well, I guess... I guess in that case, you won't have much to worry about for the festival. That said, I want to thank everyone for coming through. It might be hard, but I hope that you 
all have an idea of what it's like now. Make sure you pick a poem and get enough practice before the festival, okay? I'll be making pamphlets, so let me know ahead of time that you'll be reciting. Jeez, I should probably find some other poem to recite then. That's fine too, it doesn't have to be your own. I'm already pleasantly surprised that you're putting in all this effort for the club. It makes me really happy. Uh, yeah, no problem. Okay, everyone. I think that's about it for today. I know the festival is coming up, so but let's write... Let's try to write poems for tomorrow as well. It's been working out really nicely so far, so I'd like to continue that. As for the festival, we'll finish planning tomorrow, and then we'll have the weekend to prepare. Monday's the big day. I can't wait. I can do this. I can do this. All right. I stand up. There's no way I'll be able to find the same enthusiasm as Sayori and Monica, but I'll do my best to get through it. If it's for the sake of the club and impressing Monica, then I'll ha then I'll have to do my best. Ready to go, Sayori? Yep. Look at you two, always going home together like that. It's kind of adorable, isn't it? <laughs> Jeez, guys, don't make such a big deal out of it. It must be a little nice, though. Well, uh, how am I supposed to respond to that? It's okay, Benny. You don't have to say it. Whatever, let's go already. I walk home with Sayori once more. Okay. Even though it's only been a few days, a lot of things have already changed. But today, Sayori is being a little quieter than usual on the way home. Hey, Sayori. Sorry, I was spacing out. Uh, no wonder. Um, I was thinking about something from earlier. Uh, oh, I like how we get to, um, I mean, Sayori fumbles with her words. So let's just say that one day Yuri asked, asked to walk home with you. Huh? What would you do? What kind of question is that? You're kind of putting me on the spot here. <laughs> well? Well, yeah, I'd still walk home with you. Sayori, you really think I would ditch you for Yuri? Eh? But she's so beautiful and smart. Jeez, I already see her in the club every day. Besides, you... You always seem to really like going home together. I wouldn't just ruin that for you. You're so silly, Benny. You think about me too much sometimes. Yuri, des Yuri would deserve it if she wanted it, so... Sayori, so I already... I've already made up my mind. I really can't figure you out sometimes. Sorry. Besides, what's the point in speculating something that's never going to happen? Hmm. The conversation trails off. It's kind of weird. It's kind of a weird thing for Sayori to care so much about. But I want to respect her and keep her happy, too. Then again, the festival is only a few days away. Who knows what will happen in that time. Alright, let's do this and then that's it. <laughs> because my, my freaking, uh... My head, my brain is fried. Like, oh my gosh, that's so much reading. Oh, damn it. Disown, explode, jumpy, cute, amazing, cry, fun. Okay, she likes disown. Crimson, she likes crimson. Pain, tears, incapable, marriage, love. Entropy? Yeah. Vibrant, beauty, excitement, atonement, great. She likes graveyard. Friends, poof, skirt, determination. Enemy just mean, ah. Essence. Raindrop, melody, infallible, pleasure. Pleasure? Summer, promise, flee, games, da 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 da. Death? Nope. Vertigo, prayer, playground, romance, special. Hmm, analysis. 
Analysis? Yes. Breathe, whisper, uncanny, after image. Nature. Disoriented, play, giggle, sweet, ribbon, melancholy, jump, dark, dark. Ugh. Wrath, feather, disarray, holiday, philosophy, hopeless. Yep, that's not her. Okay. Warm, disaster, Hawaii, fear. God damn it. Unrestrained electricity, lust. Hurt, misfortune, spinning, whirlwind, shopping. Misfortune? God damn it. Desire. Lollipop, horror. Okay. Extreme, frightening. Frightening's not secretive. I think secretive would be something you'd like. Lazy, peaceful, meager. Intellectual, forgive, wonderful. Ah. Intellectual or unre- Nope. Alone, awesome, nibble, puppy, da 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 Passion? Suicide. Okay, I did it, I did it. Okay, well, that's gonna be it for now, guys. <sighs> okay, whoops, whatever. That's gonna be it for now, guys. Like, my, my brain is fried. I can't read anymore. So I hope you enjoyed this Doki Doki Literature Club. <coughs> Excuse me. Stream. Part 2. And you know what to do if you liked it. So, uh, yeah. With that being said, I'll see you guys next time. Okay? Bye! Stay creative! Yes.